there, it's Joan from Joan's Kitchen, Tasteful Voyages, and today we are going to be making a handmade pasta. It's called cavatelli, which means little caves, and it's a pasta that you don't need to have a pasta maker to make. Um, it's something that you could actually make with your kids. Uh, it's really pretty easy. It comes together quickly, and it's, it's very tasty. I think homemade pasta or, or fresh pasta tastes better than uh, store-bought or dried pasta. Um, pasta is an Italian unleavened dough. Unleavened means that there's no yeast in it. It's wheat flour that's mixed typically with water or eggs, sometimes both water and eggs. So today we have a few things. This is really the only exotic ingredient that we have. This is semolina flour. And semolina is flour that's made from durum wheat, which is a harder variety of wheat. Uh, and what happens is when the wheat goes to the mill, there's rollers that press the grains of wheat and it takes off the hull and the germ of the wheat and it leaves behind the inside, which is then ground down to make flour. So the semolina is a hard flour. It's something that gives this kind of pasta its body and its bite. It almost is like really fine cornmeal and that's kind of what it looks like. I'm also using some unbleached flour. You can use regular unbleached flour. I happen to be using flour from Italy that's extra finely milled. Um, there's a little bit of hot water that goes in this. This recipe doesn't have any eggs in it. Um, and there is some olive oil, some baking soda, a little bit of salt. So I'm going to start by pouring my semolina flour here into a bowl. And there's actually kind of a lump in it, so I'm going to smooth out the lumps there. And I have my white flour measured out too, so I'm going to put that in. And next you put the olive oil. Well, I'm going to mix it up first, actually just so that it's kind of um, mixed together a little bit. And I'm gonna make a little well in the middle and put my olive oil in there. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of my hot water in, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna put my baking soda in there and the baking soda is actually gonna start bubbling in the hot water. So it's activated. Um, the chef that I learned this from, Dino, at Abruzzo Chivas in Abruzzo, Italy, recommends using hot water because it's absorbed more easily when you're mixing this in. And I also have a little pinch of salt here that's going to go in the mix. And I'm going to start adding more flour and mixing it with the fork here. The recipe calls for about a half a cup of flour, but depending on what the weather conditions are and how humid are, you might need a little bit less or you might be a little bit more. So you need to kind of add it sparingly so that you don't overdo it. But if you get too much water and you can always add a little bit more flour, it's pretty, pretty forgiving. Um, this is still kind of lumpy. When it starts to come together a little bit more, I'm actually gonna go in and mix it with my hands. And I think I'm actually going to need a little bit more hot water. Just a little bit more there to get it to kind of hang together. The pasta shape that we're going to be making today is cavatelli, which means a little cave. They're also called gnocchettini, which is like a small gnocchi, and I think they're probably called that because when they're done, they're kind of thick and doughy, kind of more like a gnocchi than a rolled out pasta that you're used to having. Um, there are two types of pasta. There's dry pasta, which is the kind of pasta that you buy in a box from the grocery store. The Italians call that pasta secca, which is for the dry. And then there's also fresh pasta, which is what we're making right now, which is called pasta fresca. The pasta is usually formed into shapes. A lot of it is rolled out or extruded. So if you think about Play-Doh that you've ever run through some kind of a press, you know, where you push it out into little strings, that's actually extruding and that's how regular pasta is made. This is um, now wet enough where it's gonna be able to like hold together into a ball. So I'm just kind of like taking this ball of pasta in the bowl and I'm actually going to be putting it out here on my cutting board to knead it. Kneading is necessary in here. Um, the flour has gluten in it and the kneading helps develop the gluten. It helps to stretch it. And gluten is actually a protein that's contained in the wheat. So by stretching the gluten, that's what's going to give the pasta 
the elasticity and it's going to give it like a little bite or a little snap when you bite into it. Um, the best way to have pasta cooked all the way is called al dente, which means to the bite or to the tooth. So that's when it has just like a little bit of bite, not too soft or mushy. Um, kneading the pasta is a little bit different than kneading bread. You take your pasta and you kind of like fold it over itself and then you push down really hard with the heel of your hand and turn it over and do it again. And for this pasta, it comes together really quickly. It only takes about five minutes and you want to get the consistency of it to be smooth and kind of satiny. Um, a lot of chefs will say that you want the consistency of the pasta to be as smooth as a baby's bottom. The pasta, typically, how it's prepared is either boiled or it's baked. Those are the two most common ways. Um, the fresh pasta, like we're making right now, can be made by hand. Um, a lot of times, if you're making noodles or something that's flatter, you actually would take the pasta dough and roll it out into sheets in a pasta machine and then cut it to the shape like that. Or if you have a fancy pasta machine, an electric one that has discs on it, you can actually extrude the dough through the discs to get the various shapes. Um, that's what most of the store-bought pasta, how that is made. This pasta, when it's done, is going to have little ridges in it. And the little ridges um, are, are going to be what's going to help hold the sauce. So I already have some that's made here that's smooth. I made this a little while ago. I'm going to put this other one in here to rest. So with the pasta that we have that we've made earlier, what I'm going to do is cut off a little piece about the size of a plum. See, like this, about plum size. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to roll it out with my hands. So I'm kind of making it into like a log. So I'm rolling it with my hands, but at the same time, I'm kind of pulling my hands apart to stretch it a little bit. And this is going to be the basis for our dough. I do have a special tool here. This is a little tool that I did get in Abruzzo at the cooking school. And this is called a gnocchi paddle. So it's, it's wooden. On one side, it's smooth. On the other side, it has these little ridges. And you'll see why in just a second. So we're going to roll this out till it's about a third of an inch thick and then we're going to take our little bench scraper and cut these into little pieces, maybe about a third of an inch each. When you cut them, they kind of look like little pillows. So now here is the fun part. I'm going to take a little of my semolina flour and sprinkle it here on my uh, cookie sheet so that the pasta doesn't stick together when I'm making it. So we take our little pasta panel that we have here and you take one of the little pieces of dough and with your thumb, you just kind of like press it along like that and you end up, this is the little cave. So it's a little cave shape and it's got the little ridges on it. And it actually goes pretty quickly. You just scoop them down like that and they should roll right off of the little board. These boards you can get here in the States. You can order them from Amazon. On Amazon, it's called a gnocchi board, and there's a company called Fonte, F-A-N-T-E, and it costs $6. And there's another one that's available from Bed Bath & Beyond. It's called World Import from Bed Bath & Beyond, and they're called a gnocchi paddle or a gnocchi board. Now, if you don't have that, don't worry, because there's another way that you can do this, which is actually using a fork. So you take the back of the fork, and these are like the ridges on the board. It's not as extensive, but it's going to work just as well. You do the same thing. You roll it down. So it's not exactly as pretty, but it works fine. It tastes exactly the same. They're the same size. It's going to cook the same way. So that's how you do it. So you can see why this would be a fun project for parents to do with their kids. Um, again, the really only exotic thing that you would need would be the semolina flour. You can usually find that in a specialty grocery store or maybe in an Italian deli. Um, and that's something that really gives the pasta the consistency. I want to talk about where I learned how to make this pasta. And it's my happy place, my favorite place that I like to go when I'm on a trip. And it's a program that's called uh, Abruzzo Chivas. Abruzzo is one of the provinces in Italy, and Chivas is the Roman word for kitchen. And this is a family-run business. It's in a hill town in Abruzzo. It's about a three and a half, four hour drive from Rome. And they have really an excellent program there. They pick you up at the airport in Rome, 
and you drive out to their property. As I mentioned, it takes about three and a half hours or so, and you actually stay at the property. The property is a palazzo that the family restored. It's a family-run business, and it, what they've done is put a commercial kitchen into the ground floor of the palazzo. So you actually stay there, you have all your meals there, they take you out on food-related field trips, and you have cooking lessons while you're there. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful spot, and it's, the people are lovely. Their motto is come as a guest and leave as family, and it's really true. Personally, I've been there four times. They do get a lot of repeat visitors, which tells you a little bit about how people really love the program that they have there. There are three different ways to um, serve pasta. There's pasta that's called pasta asciutta, which is cooked pasta that's put on a plate and has some kind of sauce with it. And then there's also pasta in brodo, which means pasta in broth, which is something that would be like a pasta in soup. I know here, uh, one of the popular pastas to put in brodo is tortellini. And then there's also other pastas that are mixed in soup uh, with beans, like pasta fagiole, which is like little tiny, they're like little macaroni pieces that are maybe an eighth of an inch big. They're made with ditalini. And you can see how easy this is. I'm talking and I'm just like rolling these things out here. And they don't really need to dry very well. I'm not gonna cook these for you today, but the cooking is really, really easy. They cook for about four minutes in boiling salted water. Just when you're ready to cook them, make sure that you have a pot of salted water that's boiling. And there's a couple of the chefs that I've taken Italian cooking from have said, the water needs to be salty like the ocean. So don't be afraid to put too much salt in the water because that's gonna flavor the pasta while it's cooking. Um, I mentioned uh, the pasta in brodo and the pasta asciutta. The other kind of pasta, or the other way that pasta is prepared and served is pasta al forno, which means baked pasta or pasta baked in the oven. And that's the more traditional things like lasagna or like the mostaccioli al forno. So it's typically baked with some sauce, which may or may not have meat in it and cheese. You may have vegetables, um, but those are the three main ways that the pasta is cooked. The history of pasta, I actually found kind of interesting. I've always heard that pasta was brought to Italy by Marco Polo, the uh, explorer from China. And I learned while doing some research for this today that that's actually a myth that was created by a Canadian spaghetti company in the 1920s or the 1930s. There are references to a dough made out of flour and water, uh, both from the Greeks from the second century AD, and theirs was called Itrion. And then in the Talmud, which is one of the Jewish holy books, there's references to Itrium, very similar name, but with an M at the end instead of an N. And they said that this was a, a homogenous mixture of water and flour that was a common food used by the Palestinians. Um, there's also um, in Northern Africa, couscous, which is another kind of flour, but it's, it's really tiny little balls of flour. And it's usually a much harder flour. It's, used a little bit differently, but those are where we think the origins of pasta were. Now, of course, the Chinese do have pasta, and I think that they may have invented it before these inventions from the Middle East, but the, the story about Marco Polo bringing the pasta from China, sadly, is, is not true. That's just a myth. So I've got a whole bunch of these here ready to go. As I mentioned, to cook them, all you have to do is have a big pot of salted water you put them in to boil, they'll sink at first, and then they're gonna rise up to the top. And they're done in about four minutes. You're gonna end up, I have a plate of them that are already cooked here. They don't change size, they're the same size, and you end up with like a little doughy thing. It's got a nice mouth feel, and you serve these just with some plain tomato sauce. You could use meat sauce if you wanted, and I've garnished this with a basil sprig. And the shape of the pasta, the shape itself with little caves, it catches the sauce and holds it and the ridges on the pasta also hold the sauce. So that is our lesson for today, making pasta without a pasta maker, making cavatelli. I do hope you try it. If you can't find the semolina flour in your store, it's something that you could always order from Amazon. Um, it's not expensive and it's fun to play around with this. It's kind of like playing with Play-Doh. So I hope that you've enjoyed this little lesson and I will see you again next week on Monday, same time, same channel. Ciao for now.